right after college, I took a trip to the Holy Land. And uh, in each country we visited, we had a guide. And uh, some guides were better than others. And, uh, you know, some, one of the things that would distinguish them is they'd, they'd make some claims about certain places and the, the tie it had to biblical events that, you know, couldn't always be verified. And, you know, we started to joke, uh, you know, we were wondering when we got to the Dead Sea if they'd point out, you know, the pillar of salt that was Lot's wife. And uh, I guess along the same lines, if they had a chance, they'd probably want to say this is the pit that uh, the lion fell into and Benaiah went down into, you know, to kill the lion. And uh, we don't know where this pit is, of course, and uh, we don't even know where it was in Benaiah's day in terms of not the exact location. But how was it that he happened upon this pit? You know, where was he when he saw the pit, saw the lion, and realized uh, someone could fall in there and be killed himself? Uh, we don't know that, but the implication certainly is that he thought someone could fall in there. And so who might have been in danger? We've asked, you know, the why. Uh, Benaiah went down to protect others. Uh, the what they were in danger from, and the people that we need to protect spiritually from Satan, what they're in danger from. And then based on that, okay, how do I protect them? Well, the last question is who? And as I said, in one sense, it's anyone who's in danger. But in another sense, I got to thinking, okay, but Aya is out. Where do most of us spend our time, most of our time? And the answer today is, you know, at home or at work. And I don't know that it would have been much different then, would it? And so you think about it, uh, he's a soldier, so work would for him would be the army camp. You know, maybe he, they're camped out there and he comes across this and he realizes, you know, who's in danger? Well, anyone else in that camp, uh, you know, his fellow soldiers, his brothers in arms. And it made me think the application for us, you know, our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, those are the people in danger. And uh, we need to realize that as believers, you know, when I made this commitment to Christ, I made this commitment as well to my fellow Christians. I'm part of the body, and that gets ignored, you know, certainly downplayed and even ignored today that this you misunderstood, as I often say, dynamic of the church that it's not just me and my relationship with Christ, it's me as part of the body of Christ. And so I'm related to every other member of the body. I'm related to every other Christian. I have a responsibility toward them. You know, 29 times in the New Testament, there's commands for us as one another. You know, bear with one another, forgive one another, encourage one another, pray for one another. All of those, that has to be at the forefront of my mind that I have a responsibility to other Christians. And this is definitely a key example. Whatever danger they might face, the things we've seen, the sinful nature, the world, false worldview, false word view, discouragement, anything else you could think of, I have a responsibility to, to be on the alert, not only to what Satan's trying to do to me, but what he's trying to do to fellow Christians, certainly people in uh, my own church, others that I'm aware of, whatever it is, and to do what I can do. And if nothing else, that certainly includes praying for them. And as I said, praying for them like their life depends on it. Well, if work is one place where we spend a lot of time, the other's home. And so if Benaiah was around his house when he saw this pit and this lion, then who was in danger? You know, his family, his wife, his kids. You know, can you imagine that if that's where he found this pit and his first thought, wow, you know, this is where my kids run around and play. This is where my wife goes to pick berries or whatever. And wow, if they fell down in there, we certainly have a responsibility to our family, whoever we are, you know, whatever our role in the family, to be alert on their behalf, to do whatever we can against those dangers, and as I said, to pray and pray and pray like their life depends on it, because it does. 
Satan is trying to devour them. And I'll tell you what, this is what really changed my perspective on this, you know, from, you know, doing these things. I think we all do these to some degree, you know, we try to encourage and, you know, and tell someone, hey, you know, you should watch out for this and that. Try, try to, you know, bring them back, restore them in some way. But do we do it to the extent of going down into the pit? You know, do we put forth that much commitment, that much effort? And I'll be honest, I didn't until, and it was so providential. I had heard of this story 30 years before in college and always sort of wanted to preach on it, thought it'd be cool. But it wasn't until th around 30 years later and what hap was happening at the time was so providential. Uh, I have two daughters and they had reached that age of 14 and 11 where you know the dangers that they're facing now are becoming, you know, the more of the spiritual dangers. They're not only, you know, in physical danger all the time, we all are, but they're starting to be faced with some choices, faced with some decisions, you know, starting to hear some of the things of the world and process those and make their, you know, form their opinions and their beliefs. And it became very real to me that there was a danger there. And so let me tell you, I went from being on the edge of the pit and maybe not doing much, you know, throwing a rock down here and there, you know, not even now just throwing a spear down, but I committed to getting down into the pit, uh, certainly in prayer, but also in any other way that I needed to for my girls. And then it woke me up to others around me that whenever they're in danger, my family, my fellow Christians, and someone who's not a Christian as well, anyone could have fallen in that pit. Whatever it is, it's just those are the two that, you know, we have a degree of closeness to that supersedes others. And so we need to act like that and do whatever we can. You know, I mentioned before, often we say, you know, that was a good message. Uh, So-and-so really needed to hear it. Well, so-and-so really needs you to hear this and act on it, to do whatever it takes to go down into the pit to protect them spiritually. And so I hope that these four videos over Benaiah have been interesting. I hope they've also been helpful for you and whoever it else it is, God wants you to go down into the pit to protect. Thanks.